All right, um, so we need to talk about applying these proportions that we've been doing in the terms of similar polygons. So we need to be able to uh, use proportions to make similar statements, use proportions with similar polygons, use proportions to find a scale factor, and use proportions to find a perimeter. Okay, uh, All this centers around similar polygons. So vocab. Two polygons are similar if their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are proportional. Now, what does it mean for corresponding sides to be proportional? We will take a look. So, um, if two polygons are similar, then we write like this. Okay? So, similar is not quite congruent. You know, the congruent symbol is like this. Similar basically means same shape, but not necessarily same size. So what we need is a symbol that doesn't quite mean congruent, but is close. And so what we do is we wipe out the equal sign and say that they're um, similar. Okay? They look a little bit alike, but they're not exactly the same. Okay? And when you write two polygons similar like this right here, this is called a similarity statement. A similarity statement lets you know which angles are congruent and which sides are proportional. And we have to understand what the word, what that means for the sides to be proportional. And the way we do that is that when we write a similarity statement, we make sure that everything matches up. The angles that are supposed to be congruent go together. So angle A and angle E would be congruent. B and F would be congruent. C and G would be congruent. And D and H would be congruent. So the order in... So the order in these does matter, okay? It's also designed, the similarity statement is, to let you know which sides are proportional. Now what that means is, if I match up the corresponding sides and write them as ratios, write their lengths as ratios, so the length of AB to the length of EF would be one ratio, all of those corresponding side ratios would have to be the same. So BC to FG would be another one. CD to GH would be another one, and AD and EH would be another ratio. All of those would have to be equal to each other, which allows us to set some proportions up to help solve some things. Okay, so uh, let's apply this to a more specific example here. In this diagram, these two triangles are similar, RST and XYZ. First, list all pairs of congruent angles. Well, we can do it either in the picture or from the similarity statement. It's easier from the similarity statement. Angle R is congruent to angle X. Angle S is going to be congruent to angle Y. And angle T is going to be congruent to angle Z. Okay? Now, check that the ratios of corresponding side lengths are equal. Now, again, the similarity statement helps us match up sides. The ratio of RS to XY, in order for these guys to be similar, that ratio is going to have to be equal to the ratio of ST to YZ. That's going to have to be equal to the ratio of RT to XZ. So here and here, and then here and here. So let's check it out. RS is 20. XY is 12. ST is 30. X, or ZY is 18. RT is 25. XZ is 15. And if you look, every single one of these reduced down to 5 to 3. So all those ratios are going to be the same. That's what it means for them to be um, proportional. They all those, those ratios reduce down to the same thing. Okay? Now, last thing here is write the ratios of the corresponding side lengths in a statement of proportionality. So it's basically what I just did, only the statement of proportionality just says that this is equal to this is equal to this. So,
RS to XY is equal to ST to YZ which is equal to RT to XZ. Okay? Now, what that allows us to do is to carve out a couple of ratios, set them equal to each other, make a proportion, cross multiply and solve with. I can do it there, I can do it here, or I can do it with these guys. It doesn't matter. All those ratios would have to be the same. The, uh, um, so, for example, um, we'll talk about that in just a second. This first example gives you these two congruent triangles and wants you, uh, I want you to give it a shot at writing the pairs of congruent angles and then write the ratios of the corresponding side lengths in a statement of proportionality. Stop the video, try it, start it back up and see if you're correct. Hopefully you got this. Angle J and P are congruent, K and Q, L and R are congruent. And then you can see the corresponding sides. And again, all that comes from this statement of pr uh, proportionality. I'm oh, sorry, all from this similarity statement, matching up all the sides. Okay? Now, uh, next example. Determine whether these polygons are similar. Remember that all the angles have to be congruent and all the sides have to be proportional. It says, if they are, write a similarity statement and find the scale factor. There's a new word for us. And we can first see that all the angles, all the corresponding angles, are going to be congruent because they're all marked the same. Okay? Now, <clears throat> sides. Well, since FJ is in between the one arc and right angle, then I know that I've got to check the side 16, and that corresponding side here is 20, which reduces to 4 to 5. And then between the 2 arc and the 9 degree angle is 12, 12, and 15, which is also 4 to 5. And then the two um, sides that are going to correspond are going to be 24 to 30, which reduces to 4 to 5. And then last but not least, 20 to 25, which reduces to 4 to 5. Now, the scale factor, the scale factor is that reduced ratio of all the corresponding sides. In other words, since 4 to 5 keeps coming up, that's the scale factor. Now, be careful. It asks for the scale factor of ZYXW to FGHJ. So we want to go from the bigger polygon to the smaller one. So our scale factor is actually need, is going to need to be flipped over because I kept comparing the small to the big. The scale factor is actually going to be 5 to 4. Okay? We need to understand there is a difference there. And that's what the scale factor is. Okay? Scale factor is useful because the scale factor is that ratio that every other ratio needs to be equal to. So in this diagram, these two triangles are similar, and we want to find x. Well, you can match up the sides using the similarity statement. DE matches up with MN. So 9 to 12. And I do that first because that gives me a reduced ratio of 3 to 4, which means that the ratio of EF to MN has to equal that scale factor. That's our scale factor. So we can cross multiply, multiply and get x to be 9. Okay. Simple enough using these similar figures to find our missing links. Okay? All right. Some stuff for you to do here. Find the scale factor of these two similar polygons and then find the value of x. Stop the video, start it back up and see if you're right. Scale factors 1 to 2 because we had to go from small guy to big guy. This specifically asks which way to go. Okay, now the scale factor is 1 to 2. So I write a ratio of 5 to x, um, which is actually incorrect. Oops, did you see what I did? It's not 5 and x. It's not QT and BC. It's uh, RS and BC. So I messed up here. This should be a 4. So when we cross multiply, we ought to get an 8. Whoops.
There you go. If you got eight, then you're good. Okay? All right. Um, another example here for you. A town is building a new swimming pool. An Olympic pool is rectangular with length 50 meters and width 25 meters. The new pool will be similar in shape, but only 40 meters long. Okay, so it'll be similar in shape, but only 40 meters long. So 40 meters long. Find the scale factor of new pool to Olympic pool. The new pool is 40 meters long. The Olympic pool is 50 meters long. So the scale factor is 4 to 5. Okay. Um, now, find the perimeter of the Olympic pool and the new pool. Well, the perimeter of the Olympic pool, we've got the dimensions here. The perimeter of the Olympic pool is simply 50 plus 50 plus 25 plus 25, which is just 150 meters. The perimeter of the new pool, well, we would have to find the width. The scale factor is 4 to 5. So if I compare the width of the new pool to the width of the Olympic pool, now I can cross multiply and solve this. You get 5w equals 100, where w is going to be 20. So the width is now 20 meters. So now I've got 40 plus 40 plus 20 plus 20, which is 120 meters. Okay? No problem. Next question is, well not next question, but interesting question here, is if we write the ratio of the perimeters, the new pool to the Olympic pool, look at what happens. That reduces down to 4 to 5. So even the ratio of the perimeters is equal to the scale factor 4 to 5. As a matter of fact, any linear measurement between two similar polygons, if you write them as a ratio, um, will reduce down to the scale factor. The scale factor is pretty powerful. Okay? So, you got a, another example here to take a look at. Try to find the scale factor and then find the value of x. Did you get a scale factor of 2 to 3? And did you find the length of AE to be 12? I hope you did. If not, make sure you get in here, and um, we'll go through it together and figure out what happened. Okay? Uh, next question is, find the perimeter of ABCD. Right, were you able to do that? Well, here's the thing. We don't have all the missing side lengths. And we can go find those. We can go find those missing side lengths if you really want to. How about we find the perimeter of the big guy? We already know the scale factor is two to three. The perimeter of the big guy. Hey, what's going on? The perimeter of the big guy is going to be 18 plus 15 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. which is 69, right? Since the scale factor is 2 to 3, and we now know that the ratio between the uh, perimeters is, has to be equal to the scale factor also, then I can take that scale factor, set it equal to x to 69, cross multiply, and be able to find the perimeter, which is going to be 46, without knowing those other sides. So the perimeter of a, b, c, d, e is just going to be 46. Okay. All right. Uh, one more example. You know the altitudes are also going to be equal to the scale factor. So we have these two similar triangles here. Uh, 
uh, we want to find the scale factor by matching up corresponding sides. TR, you can see here, corresponds to XZ, which is here. So the scale factor is going to be 6 plus 6 is 12, 8 plus 8 is 16. Go 3 to 4. Since the scale factor is 3 to 4, that's going to be equal to the ratio of this altitude to this altitude. And we'll talk more about altitudes later. But basically, this segment in the triangle to this segment of the triangle. So 3 to 4 is equal to x to 20. Cross multiply. X ends up being 15, so the length of that altitude is 15. Okay, still using that scale factor. All right, that's it. Homework's out in Canvas. Make sure you have it done by next time.